Hello everybody, this is Patrick from Allquant. In this video, I will be talking about perhaps the oldest asset class in the world, Go. Alright, Go has a fascinating history, so this video will not be complete without at least a brief look at its history. I will also share a few use cases for Go, then we'll examine why Go can be an interesting addition to a portfolio. I'll explain a few important drivers for Go prices and finally share a few ways that you can gain exposure to Go. Okay, let's take a trip through time. One of the oldest Go treasure ever found was discovered in the Varna necropolis in Bulgaria. From the items found among the treasure, it offered a glimpse of how this ancient civilization 6,000 years ago view gold. So even back then, gold was used as a symbol of power and wealth. Most of the gold artifacts were found in only a few of the tombs, and the items were fashioned as either jewelries or symbols rather than practical tools. Archaeologists had also discovered evidence of metallurgy, where gold was combined with other metals like copper and silver to form alloys. But the usage of gold as currency did not come about until around 600 BC, where the Kingdom of Lydia minted the first gold coin as a means of authenticating payment. The coins also facilitated trade between people as well as nations. The coins were also issued by a central government to give it authenticity and also prevent counterfeiting. This basically continued all the way until modern civilization, until the stage where paper money was invented. But even then, the value of paper money was backed by gold, where paper money can be redeemed for an equivalent value of gold. Okay, so this is known as the gold standard. But after the Second World War, the Bretton Woods system was established where instead of redeeming paper money for gold, member nations can redeem their currency for the US dollar, which is then convertible to gold at a fixed price of 35 US dollar per troy ounce. However, this system proved to be unsustainable and was eventually abandoned in the 70s. From that day on, the link between paper money and gold is forever broken and this ushered in the era of fiat currencies where the value of currency is backed only by the full faith of the government that is printing it. Hence, the usage of gold as a currency became a relic of the past. So besides the historical relationship between gold and money, okay, gold does have some practical uses. Let's take a look at some of them. The oldest practical use of gold is of course to be fashioned as jewelry. Gold can then be worn as either symbolic ornaments like wedding rings or as symbols of power like the king's scepter and crown. Due to the long history of gold as money, it continues to be used as a reliable store of wealth. Nations store a significant bulk of their wealth in gold bullions that is stored in secure vaults. The same goes for many ultra-wealthy individuals. Okay, gold is chemically inert, easy to insert, and also non-allergenic in nature. This makes it highly suitable for dental fillings, crowns, and other usage in dentistry. Gold is also used in medicine, in salt or radioisotope forms, which are taken orally or via injection. It can also be used in cancer treatment. Gold plays a vital role in the aerospace industry to lubricate various mechanical parts in circuitry as well to conduct electricity and also to coat the interior of spacecraft to protect astronauts from radiation and heat. 
And because gold is a dependable conductor and doesn't corrode, it is perfect for use in electronic circuitry. So you can find a small amount of gold in almost all electronic devices you can find today. Okay, we can see how gold can be useful, but why do people invest in gold? As mentioned, gold is seen as a traditional store of value. Gold is indestructible and is able to last forever. And because of the perceived ability of gold to store value, it can be used as a hedge against inflation. Due to the historical relationship between gold and money, it can also be used as a hedge against the debasement of fiat currencies. So during the gold standard, if governments were to print money, they would need more paper money to redeem the same amount of gold. Hence, the gold price would adjust for the inflated paper money. Even though we are no longer on the gold standard, okay, there is still an implicit linkage between the amount of currency in circulation and the gold price. Perhaps the most important reason for investing in gold boils down to good old diversification. Gold is different from the traditional assets of stocks and bonds. All right? This is a chart of the rolling 60 days correlation between gold and both stocks and bonds as represented by their respective ETFs. Okay, you can see that the correlation fluctuates between positive and negative territory over time. All right, so what this means is essentially that gold moves quite differently as compared to stocks and bonds. Gold is also different from your other traditional inflation hedges like your inflation protected treasury securities okay, as well as commodities. Although gold tends to spend more time moving in the same direction as these other inflation hedges, okay, the positive correlation is actually not high most of the time. So this actually makes gold a unique asset on its own, okay, even within the commodities class. All right, so now let's examine what drives gold prices. Gold tends to do well during inflationary periods, which is evident from the shaded areas in blue. Those are the periods when the US Consumer Price Index was increasing. However, it doesn't explain why gold prices increase drastically during the period shaded in red. So during that period, inflation was not really an issue, okay, but then gold went up multiple folds. So to explain this, we need to look at the next driver of gold. This is a chart showing the relationship between gold and the US dollar. The orange line is the gold price and the blue line is the dollar index. So dollar index is basically a measure of the dollar strength against a basket of major trading partners currencies. So you can see that when the dollar is weak, gold is strong, but when the dollar is strong, gold tends to suffer. This inverse relationship comes back to the fact that gold is a hedge against currency debasement. So when the US government prints money, the dollar actually weakens and gold strengthens. And this is exactly what happened during the period we were looking at, which is when the US government launched quantitative easing, which is the equivalent of printing money. Okay, this, this happened after the great financial crisis in 2008. And as a result of that, gold price surged in response. Okay, so there is another element that also influences the strength of the dollar, and that is the relative interest rates between the US and the rest of the world. So when the US interest rates is significantly higher than the other major countries, the dollar would strengthen because foreign money would be attracted by the higher US interest rates all right, and flow to the US. And because of the strong dollar, gold would be negatively impacted. And this is exactly what we are seeing today. Gold is not an interest-bearing asset. Okay, it doesn't pay dividends like a stock. 
and it doesn't pay coupons like a bond. Hence, there is opportunity cost to holding gold okay, in comparison to your other assets that actually generates yield. And this is why another driver for gold price is the real yield. Okay, so real yield is basically the nominal yield adjusted for inflation. The black line that you see here is the gold price okay, with the y-axis on the left showing the price. The red line shows the inverted real yield with the y-axis on the right indicating the yield in percentage. You can see the close relationship between the two. So if the Fed hikes interest rates while inflation is steady or even coming down, the real yield actually increases and that becomes a headwind for gold. Okay, finally, how can you gain exposure to gold? The most direct way is to buy physical gold in the form of gold bars or coins. This is also the way governments and wealthy people store gold. This is the most secure but also the most expensive way to own gold because you need to consider the security and the storage cost. Okay, so for traders who are only interested in trading gold, they can consider opening a futures account and trade gold futures. Okay, but this requires knowledge of how futures work and also requires constant monitoring regarding the expiry of the contracts. An indirect way to gain exposure to gold is to buy gold-related company stocks such as gold miners. However, do note that the stock price can deviate right, from the gold price movement. Now, thanks to exchange-traded funds, you can also buy gold ETFs from the stock exchange. Okay, there are a number of ETFs available, so do read the term sheet to decide which one suits your specific purpose. You can refer to the link below for a list of gold ETFs. All right, this is all I wanted to cover on gold. So if you have found this video useful, please let us know by clicking the like button. And if you want similar contents like this, do subscribe to our channel if you have not already done so. All right, Alcon also conducts courses on investing. So if you are interested, please visit our website for more information. Okay, so I'll see you at the next video.